This is the plaintiff, William Harrell. He says the defendant was a tenant of his, and he was also a nightmare. The guy wrote, this place floods in soap on the exterior of the windows when he left and he punched a hole in the shower door. He won't be taken advantage of by the likes of the defendant and is suing him in this court for the $995.19 he's owed. This is the defendant, David. He says the plaintiff has been his landlord for over eight years and forced him to let people see the place because he was selling. Like 50 people came every day and none of them wore masks. Then he tried to force him out because he had a cat, which he always had. Oh, this lousy landlord money? No way. He's accused of trash on the joint. All parties, please use your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case on the docket, the plaintiff rented to the defendant and says the guy was a terrible tenant and vandalized the place before he left. But the defendant claims he lived there for eight years and treated the place like it was his own. So he owes the plaintiff nothing. It's the case of leaving a real mess behind. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome, ma'am. Okay, Mr. Harrell, you are suing uh, Mr. David, your former tenant. For $995, you kept a security deposit, so you're, you say your damages are actually $1,495. You're suing him for two months' rent because you say he breached your lease agreement, and so you're entitled to that liquidated damages. Talk to me. Tell me what happened here. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, the defendant uh, rented from me for approximately eight years. Um, oh, wow. Over the course of those... Over the course of the, actually, I inherited him when I purchased the property. He lived there and stayed on for approximately eight years. Never until this year that had the defendant ever had a pet or made mention of a pet. He had brought up, I was there in January when we signed a new lease and noticed that there was a cat inside. And he advised me that the cat was in there because he was protecting it from the storms. So it was storming outside. And I said, well, you can't have a cat. You know, it's not in your lease agreement. And we signed a new lease agreement uh, at that point, um, which was really a carbon copy pretty much of every lease we'd ever signed, which stipulates if you can have a pet, I have to approve it. Consider that as part of rent and security deposit. In March of this year, roughly two months after he signed the new lease, um, I had put the property up for sale. And one of the buyers that came through that was under contract, they wanted to see copies of all of my leases. And in that process, I showed them the leases and they asked why there was no, there was a, clearly a pet living in his unit. They wanted to know why there was no pet or why there was a pet and no pet addendum to the lease as the lease indicates. And I told him it was an unauthorized pet. So I went back and said, we need to make this right because I'm selling the place. And that is, I'll let you have a pet. You just either have to pay for it, buy a security deposit and higher rent, or just get rid of the pet, which was never authorized. Go on. So upon advising uh, the defendant, uh, the defendant, and I advised him by text message, the defendant uh, responded back to me uh, over the course of several days, uh, a lot of different messages, ultimately stating that he was going to be leaving and that he was leaving in three days by the end of the month. Okay, so I would like to understand, I know you have a lease, and in the lease, there are a couple of things that is really what you're suing about. Uh, the lease says, let's see, renewal term and termination. Early termination of the lease is allowable with two months rent as early termination fee. Okay, so your position on this is, I don't know why this guy left. He left in the middle of a lease. He owes me these two months. I, did, I never told him he had to leave. He made the choice to leave. What did you tell him? What did you tell him? That his rent I was going to go up 100 bucks. I told him that if he wanted to have the cat, I would, he'd have to pay a security deposit and he'd have to pay additional rent for the pet, yes. Okay, Mr. David, let's you and I talk because you think that this is all a pretext, right? 
You think he's mad yes, because Honor. the realtor wanted to parade a lot of people into the place because he decided, by the way, when did you list the property for sale? I believe it was uh, in March. So where are you guys from? Pinellas County, which town? This is Treasure Island, Florida. Okay. Mr. David, Mr. Harrell's realtor, according to you, wanted to bring people in once things were heating up and complicated because of COVID. Talk to me and tell me what happened there. You know, it was, it was all a surprise to me that Mr. Harrell was even putting the place up for sale. Um, me and Mr. Harold. That's none of your friends. business, though, is it? Oh, you mean you're it just really surprised because you were friends? Right, because you were yes. friends, you were surprised. Well, let me ask you, I, do, uh, Mr. Harold, do you live on the property too or no? No, I do not. Okay. Would you guys socialize or you mean I've been there forever and we are very friendly? Is that what you meant? Your Honor, m Mr. Harold and I were friends and we've been to several outings and concerts together. Um, we both uh, okay. enjoy so you'd music actually and festivals. Socialize. Okay. Absolutely. Got it. Been to his home, been his boat, been fishing, so forth and so on. Okay. So you were surprised that he that he didn't say, "Hey, buddy, I'm going to sell the place." So then, what happens? Well, once that had happened, the realtor seemed like she was under the gun because of the COVID situation, that she had so much time to bring so many people in. Within, I would say, from March 4th until March 22nd. There was a barrage. It must have been 1 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock. There must have been anywhere between 3 to 9 people a day for a five-day period for about a two-week long period. With losing my job, with him putting the place up for sale, with nobody coming in with any protection, no Lysol, not taking their shoes off, and any way an ethical situation when you're selling a property and showing it during this world pandemic, at least put a mask on. I don't know what they were doing in my place, touching door handles. But why couldn't there be some kind of agreement reached where people who walked in had to have masks and people who walked in had a Purell? Um, I mean, it's very unsafe for the realtor to be bringing them without any masks by that point. I get it. Your Honor, I have severe asthma. I had reached So at any point, do you or the other tenant call? Yeah, that's what I wanted to know. Do you call him and say, hey, dude, you can't bring strangers in here all day and night? I mean, I understand you, Absolutely. Mr. Harrell. You have a time constraint. You want to try to sell it before the world crumbles. But I understand him, too. Your Honor, in the beginning, I was just abiding to what Mr. Harrell wanted. I was just trying to appease everybody and just, you know, let him sell his place and just try to move on with this situation with the new, whoever the new landlord would be. And then it got to the point after the 15th, um, it just got more and more. The place was pending for sale. The sale fell through on the 22nd. And after the 22nd- Mr. Harrell, give me a second, Mr. David. Mr. Harrell, why did the sale fall through? Um, the contract fell through because the uh, investors that were buying it, their source of funds dried up because of the concern of COVID. Here's the thing. I'm looking at a text from you to David at 6.50 a.m. on March 24th. And what you say is, David, I respectfully acknowledge your position regarding showing the apartment. So you must have at some point talked to him and said, I don't want you to show the apartment anymore, correct? Yes. He had sent me a text the night before. Yeah. I don't have that text. My first text is this one. So if he sends you a text on March 23rd, do you remember what the text said? I don't want you to bring people here. Or do you have it? Can you read it to me? I, I can. I have it. Let me find it here. Bill, I am sorry to hear about your contract pulling out at this moment. We all agree that it's not a good time for strangers coming in and out of our houses with a virus going on. I am a candidate with COPD and I am susceptible to this virus. I am under house quarantine, and I am having no strangers come in at this moment. You got the girl next door working at home in quarantine, and nobody agrees at this moment with people coming in the property with this virus being an epidemic. I think our health is more important than money at this moment. We be patient, and we will do what we can to help you in any way, but at this time, I don't think it's cool. And that's when I responded that 
I would do David, that. respectfully, yes. I acknowledge your position regarding showing the apartment. And then, for the first time, we will work around that. I also need to address another issue. One of the issues with the last buyer was leases and the pets on site. It was noticed your apartment did not have a pet addendum, pet deposit, or charge extra for the pet on site. Those prospective buyers saw that as an opportunity to hold you in default of your lease agreement. And then you cite the clause, which they could have used to evict you, as this would have put you in default of the lease agreement. So accordingly, I need to clean that up immediately. You and I both know that that sale did not fall through because of a cat. I will prove you to have a cat as long as certain criteria is met. You must sign a lease with a pet addendum. As part, you will be subject to a pet deposit of 200, as well as a monthly rent increase of 100 for pet rent. If you agree, we will need to get this signed within 48 hours and payments made accordingly. The other option is that you remove your cat. That also would be subject to 48 hours to do so. How many years have you had that cat, David? Ma'am, the cat was on the property when Mr. Harrell purchased the property. It had lived on the property for seven years under my car. So with that being said, if you see the picture of the house, it has a small courtyard. It liked to sun. It's the reason for that. Key Who cat doesn't? Right oh, my there. God. Is, it, is that the cat? What's the cat's name? So little mama. <laughs> There's a reason behind this. There's the little courtyard where it used to sun. The reason that cat is there, there were two cats. One of them was run over right in front of the house. So that cat slept at my door for the last seven years on a mat outside. And it, it, I, I brought it in during hurricane storms or attacks. Mr. Harold knew about this cat. He Mr. David, look at me. Look at me. I, yes. Mr. David, look at me. Yes. That's your cat. I yes, know it's your cat. Yes. I feel it. It's your cat. It's in your house. And technically speaking, he is right that something new needs to be addressed. The problem, Mr. Harrell, is that you send him a text saying you got 48 hours, you got an addendum, and then you, you on your own, decide that the rent increase is going to be 100. Is there anywhere in the original lease, or I'm sorry, in the renewal lease that he signed in January, that says what the pet rent will be? Or does the lease say, I have to approve the pet and we have to talk about what the pet rent will be? It says specifically, no pets allowed unless the pet is medically necessary and landlord is presented with, with at lease agreement execution with a document validating the necessity of the tenant by signed physician. Pets will only be allowed with a pet addendum to this agreement. A pet deposit and or additional rent may be required at the landlord. How much additional rent, Mr. Harrell? If you're suggesting to me, Mr. Harrell, that the clause that says a pet deposit and or additional rent may be required at the landlord's sole discretion, that you could just make up it's going to be another 100 bucks. And if you don't do what I say, you're in breach of the lease. That's not how that contract is going to be read by any judge in America. Welcome back to the People's Court. This is a really interesting case. The tenant here says that, yeah, he would not let the landlord show the unit to other prospective tenants because those prospective tenants were not wearing masks and his health is compromised already with asthma. It is an interesting argument. Let's go back into the courtroom. You have an absolute right to have a pet addendum and to, and to say, this is what I want if you want to keep that pet or you got to go, which is clearly the implication of your you have 48 hours. What you don't have a right to say is, I've declared it's 100 bucks, and if you don't pay it, you owe me two months' rent because you have violated your lease. That's what you're doing in this case, and you don't have that right. But more importantly, I want to read these texts because as soon as you send them, the other option is you have is to remove the cat. That would also be subject to 48 hours. Please advise how you would like to address this, Bill. This isn't because you're appalled that there's a cat that's been there for all this time. This is really because Mr. David had the hubris to send you a text the night before saying, no one can come in here. And then you send this saying, hey, you're in violation. The, the, the people noticed that you were, that didn't happen. You and I both know that. In fact, according to you, Mr. David, they say, hey, does a cat come with the building? Because they didn't mind. That didn't happen. And then what's 
David's answer. Bill, why are you strong arming me now in, in times like this? Bill, we've been friends for over seven years, and I've been a loyal tenant to you. I am not trying to make things difficult. The girl next door also is in quarantine with asthma and working from home. Everything is shut down in the area. I mean, all we're asking, all's we're asking for is after the 15-day quarantine, it would be fine. Kim calls us at 10.30 at night to let us know the contract failed and that they want to bring more people. I completely understand and respect what you, that you want to get rid of this place. I'm not trying to hinder that in any way. You say, I'm pulling this animal stuff. You mean you pulling this animal stuff on me. It's just a little below the belt. So what do you want me to say? If I don't pay the 300 for pet fee, you want to evict me? This is in March where people are suffering. And did you lose your job or were you working from home? Mr. Davis. Ma'am, I did, I did lose my job due to COVID-19. I'm a bartender. When did you, you know, lose your job? Issue. Right around March 15th. Yep, yep, yep. Bill, I would appreciate it if we could talk at least. Give me that much. Here's the guy over and over texting you, trying to get you to talk to, them, to him. I've known you too long. You've been too good to me. And you have me in an absolute shambles in tears right now. I mean, here's a human being who's really kind of freaking out over the situation. And you have a chance to be a decent man and just text a guy back, just talk to him. And instead, what you've decided is that you're not going to answer a single text, nothing, silence. Is he, are you guys talking on the phone or anything during this time, or he's just not talking back? Just silence. I'd like you to know something. Back in March, Governor DeSantis, the governor of our state, decided that not a single landlord could evict anybody for non-payment. And you know what this fellow could have done? He could have said, I ain't paying no cat addendum. I ain't paying no rent. And do you know what you could have done, Mr. Harrell? Not a darn thing. So instead of having a jerk who does that to you, you, and you're well within your rights, this is your place, OK? You let everything simmer there. The guy's freaking out. He's like, come on, come on. And we're like, oh, I guess you want me out. You're not answering him. And the guy leaves. This guy is a good man. He's been there eight years. He's been, you know, you've been friends. You've gone to stuff together. He's sitting there trying to work it out, and you're just treating him like garbage at a time when people should have all been kumbayaing and holding hands and helping each other. But at the end of the day, Mr. Harrell, it's your place. If you don't want him there with the cat, then, and, and you're telling him that, then he leaves with the cat. But then you sue him for violating the lease by breaching early? No. So I don't find, I find that you're the one who told him, hey, we're not sticking by the lease because you got to pay me all this more rent at a time when you know that this man lost his job as a bartender because you know he's a bartender and he couldn't possibly pay it. So instead of being a jerk and saying, nye, nye, try and catch me, what he did was leave. He did not breach the contract by leaving. And you have every right to say, you've got a cat, I don't want you here anymore, which is kind of what you said. But when you say that, don't then rewrite history and claim you owe me two months because you breached. But certainly, don't act like that in the middle of a worldwide pandemic, for the love of God. Have a little humanity. I never, I never told him. Verdict that. for the defendant. Gotcha. <laughs> well, the, uh, the plaintiff has not provided in this case, and I'm sure he's rather upset. Let's, let's talk to him. Mr. Harrell, what do you think about the judge's decision? I don't agree with the judge's decision. It is a violation of the lease, and that is what happened. So anyway, you kind of come off looking like a heel here, you know, with the pandemic and everything. How do you respond to that kind of charge? I, I think feel the bad? proof is in the performance. Not at all. Not at all. Did you sell the building, by the way? Absolutely. Okay. Well, good for you. All right. Well, David, you're happy as a clam. You, you really are uh, enthusiastic about what just happened. Talk to me. Absolutely. I was a loyal tenant for over seven years. Mr. Harrell was actually a very good friend of mine. I am just appalled the way he tried to pull this all together. And um, with that being said, let's just all be safe. Did you find a good place to stay where you're living now? And what about the cat? Did you take the cat and keep it? Took the cat, brought it to my family's house, and I'm currently staying with a girlfriend of mine, and I'm also watching over my elderly mother. All right. So things are okay with you. Well, listen, congratulations. Thank yes. you very much. Well, thank you And that'll you wrap it up much. for this case.
Very interesting case indeed, to say the least. Let's join the judges now for another session of After the Verdict. I have to say, I have never in my life heard of somebody coming to look at a building, a multi-unit building, three or four units, whatever it was, and say, oh, one of the people there had a cat? No, no. I don't want you that know building. that that didn't happen. I, that was completely just, made up. So that, that really But it just these circumstances, bad. it just smelled bad, you know, where you're going to turn around and tell somebody, hey, you have 48 hours to hand me th uh, 300 something dollars uh, or else. And then say, oh, and by the way, since you left, you owe me, you know, now, all this time later, you left, so you owe me two months. Right. Another thing that came through in this case is the idea that now landlords are going to have to be a little bit more careful about how they show apartments like this and make sure the people who are showing up are going to have masks, are going to use sanitizer around their hands, et cetera. And give, Absolutely. Give the tenants some modicum of comfort that, you know, they're not going to have their place contaminated. Absolutely. I don't think there's a court in the land that would say, hey, you're breaching your lease by not allowing complete strangers to walk in your house. Right. And if you have a comorbidity, you don't care that someone has a rag over their face. I mean, the irony is that in the state of Florida, you know, he could have put this landlord in such a bad position. Oh, God. He could have just camped out there. Yeah, He'd still the guy be wouldn't there have been with no to end in the sight. Place. There'd he be no end in the sight place. now. He'd say, I'm not paying rent and I'm not paying Oh, it would have cost the landlord thousands and yeah. thousands. And then for him to turn around and, and, and file a lawsuit against the guy for right. two months rent is just out of control. Yeah, it was tough. So John from Spokane wants to know, uh, what's one of your favorite cases you've had in the people's court? Well, one that I remember is there, there were two women uh, who were in a relationship together and they wanted to have a baby. So they asked one of their friends to donate the sperm, which he did, and um, they were gonna use a turkey baster. It did not work initially. So they wanted him to do it not just once every other day, but every day. And eventually he said, I'm pooped out, I'm not gonna do it. And they ended up suing him. The reason that's really interesting to me is that one of my law school professors has a daughter who did exactly the same thing and it was a Thanksgiving night and they used a turkey baker, guess what? She got pregnant.